<laughs> oh, hello guys! Hello everyone! Thank you for watching again on my vlog. And today, I am with my guest. She will introduce herself later. So today, our vlog, in this vlog, I'm going to talk about being a full-time student with a part-time job. And I'm with a friend who have a part-time job, which is very cool. Okay, so I'm gonna let her introduce herself because she knows herself better. Hi, I'm Akshara and uh, I studied in Conestoga for one year and Seneca. I did my public relations post-grad from Conestoga and marketing management from Seneca. So I have two years of experience in post-graduation diploma certificate courses. And uh, besides that, I'm working with Majdel as social media content moderator. And I'm also looking for a job towards public relations field or anything towards community service. Yeah, see, she's so cool. Thank you for being in my vlog. Our vlog is all about being a part-time uh, worker, right? So let's start with the working students' rules and regulations. First, the SIN number. Yeah. The first gateway to anything is a SIN number. Without SIN number, you cannot work anywhere. It's illegal. So yeah, first you have to get your SIN number activated the moment you enter the country mm -hmm. and then you can start applying for jobs. When you're a full-time student, you are only permitted to work 20 hours a day. Yep. And, a week. Uh, 20 hours a week. <laughs> yeah, so if you exceed that, it's like you are not abiding by the rules and yep. it has like major consequences on your future documentation process. Uh, the days you're on, on your vacation or anything, you are allowed to exceed 20 till 40 hours. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you can just work 20 hours a week. Yeah, so like for example, your term is winter, uh, fall and winter. Then you can work full time during yeah. spring if you're going back um, to school by fall again. You also have to be very mindful of the dates mentioned in work permit or mm -hmm. uh, study permit letter because if you exceed that, again, that's violation of yeah. it's having major consequences. So check the validity or the expiry. Yeah date of your work permit. Um, it's kind of the same with the study permit, right? Like just a few months difference. So make sure yes. you check that. So next is, let's go deeper on your part-time job. So where did you find your job? So when you come here, definitely the first motive is you have to have a job. Yes. Every, every, <laughs> other, yeah, every other international student, it's like beg, borrow, steal, you need a job. Yeah. So people try on Indeed, people try on LinkedIn, people approach their professors. You also have a lot of networking events coming up. You can attend that. Mm -hmm. You can attend job fairs. And another thing, you can physically go to the stores or oh. offices. Yeah, and, me and yeah. Shreya yeah. and Gavin <laughs> went like i don't know we went so many uh, yeah, restaurants like, even i remember visiting uh, conestoga mall at least 10 yeah, times i think we printed yeah. a lot of a resume yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> a lot of resume yeah. and just go right into the restaurant it was successful for me i love it, it works it yeah. eventually works so it's, it's all on your luck sometimes you just get the job easily if you go physically to the store but sometimes it takes a while, yeah. but you do get it. Like you, you have to have that dedication that you are going to get the job. Sometimes desperate. <laughs> <laughs> I was applying uh, through Indeed and I found this company which was pretty much inclined towards digital marketing mm. and what I want to explore into and the job was pretty much interesting as mm. it was not something in a restaurant or anything. I had to just uh, work from home because of COVID. So I found this company named Majorel and I applied to them. I sent them my cover letter, my resume. Obviously when I was studying in Conestoga, I had we had this course called Career Management if you yep. remember. So it basically teaches you how to polish your resume and uh, how to go about applying a job. So that really helped me a lot. So yeah, I did follow yeah, it. And I, then I also like work with her, like really with one on one. I went to her, talked to her and just yeah. showed my resume. Yeah, like the professors are really helpful. They give you honest feedback yeah. on what is the which areas you need to improvise and do to in order to attract, you know, greater marketers out there. There's hope everywhere and everybody <laughs> finds a job. Yep. Just like I found a job, just like she found a job. So I had a hard time though. Like remember we don't have a job yeah, for even the... when I got a job. Okay, so I got job after like eight months. Yeah. And my friends got job within weeks. 
few people they took like around two months some people took a month or so usually you get it in like two months or so but i did not get it i had to visit Same. all the malls i had to apply oh. all the companies so indeed was my favorite app linkedin was my favorite app compared to instagram or twitter back then yeah. so yeah after eight months i got the job but then yeah you don't lose hope just you, keep on trying yeah. Yeah, that's when you actually learn how do you, you know manage the yeah. budgeting and everything. How do you manage your expenses? Like you only have one hundred dollars <laughs> every year. How will I pay my bills? Yeah. So yeah, that happened. Yeah. So I was I was talking to this woman who works at um, a publication events publication. So she's just I I talked to her in LinkedIn. I messaged her in LinkedIn. Blah blah blah. And then I. Send her my email. Yeah. So when and you just you know exactly. Talk. So when you're not getting a job, it's not necessary for you to always have this that they have to pay you. Sometimes on LinkedIn, if you ask them, like you know, we can help you, we can assist you mm. with this this marketing program or whatever. That is a very plus point on your resume because you get an experience. Yeah. In a in a way, you are earning something. If not cash, you are earning an experience, experience. and it's really counted when you apply yeah. for jobs. Yeah. What's your experience? Experience in your workplace and how do you like it? How do you not like it? Everyone has like a different experience. Like mm. my friends who work in restaurants, they have a different gossip every day. They have a different experience every day. Mm, for But, sure. But uh, I pretty much could not get in hard like hardcore experience of in corporate because I joined the company when COVID started. So I was working from home, mm -hmm. but I would say like we have like a huge team, and I am in a way learning the corporate manners and ethics in a way. So it has helped me that ways. And otherwise, I really like my job because it's it's like being a social media moderator. It's not people think it's an entertainment job. You just have to watch few videos, comments, everything moderated. But you also polish your knowledge with it. You you are exposed to different things happening around the world uh, through virtual uh, pathways. Mm -hmm. So I think I really love my job because yeah. I get to learn different things every day, and I'm updated with every trending music on For sure. <laughs> every challenge. And every every sad news, happy news, everything happening around the world. Yeah. Basically. So struggling working part time as a full time. Student. So I know your struggle because your time is really weird. Like your shift or weird. Yeah. So the both the courses I took was pretty much compact. A huge, huge con marketing concepts were all crumbled uh, into a year program. True. So I had like very heavy assignments. I had assignments almost every day. I had quizzes and I had a lot to do. And my job timings were three a.m. to morning eight a.m. Or sometimes it was morning 6 a.m. to 11 or 10 uh, a.m. Mm -hmm. So it was a very odd timing because uh, I could not understand if I could sleep early or I should sleep after my job. Oh my god! But uh, because of COVID, my lectures would start at 8 a.m. in the morning, so I would just close my shift and I would just start uh, attending <sighs> the lectures. So it does get taxing a bit. But this is where you actually learn how to manage your time, yeah, your and time. this is where you actually learn how to prioritize things. You know how to become more independent and mm -hmm. manage your thing out. No, so, yeah. sometimes there's a problem like a person's gonna be like more focused on their part time, and then just forgot. Yes, their, yes. Like, remember, you went here because you're an. Through an international student pathway, yes. you have so to there are a lot of yeah, there are a lot of students who have like a lot of responsibilities from back home. Mm -hmm. Some people they get so drowned in their responsibilities that they somewhere tend to neglect the studies and True. they just work hard towards working more. And in fact, some people because of this they also work in cash, mm -hmm. which is not like no, not recommended. Yeah, I, I've been telling that in my yeah. some of my videos that yeah. no, not recommended. Yeah, like people comment in my um, in the comment section about looking for a job but cash, not through your credit, so that yes. the government will not see it. But it's just. Um, risky. It's it's very risky. Very risky. It's Plus, very you're also studying. Um, you're gonna like forget about your studies, so that's gonna be hard. Like, um, employer, employ. Most of the employers are looking on your. Experience plus your efforts on studying on your school. So make sure that you're working, but you also have a good marks or active. Your your professors will gladly recommend yes. you to other employers because if you're just 
blah in the class then yeah it's, it's very important hard to yeah like it's very important to network. show your presence and it's very yeah exactly networking as well as the professor has to know that a person named akshara exists or yes. kathy exists in the class because when you come as an international student you're not only representing your country but there are not many students in the class so you have to have the strong point to stand out amongst everybody out there because not just you everybody is competing True. everybody wants a job everybody wants the bag and everybody wants that title so you have to understand what's so unique about you mm-hmm. so th- when i started my course the first day i am not a very introvert personality but i was low key very nervous because Me too. It, yeah because it, they gave us a simple activity of just introducing your names and all those mini games out there you cannot you don't have the time to sit there and motivate yourself to go out and speak and decide yeah. whether you're introvert or not you have to just be on your toes and start speaking so that's when i realized oh my gosh maybe i, don't, I just don't belong in this course no! but then as as it went days past i decided okay i have to be more comfortable because mm. i have come here not to quit i have come here to grow and this is where you actually grow right? oh my god i love that. Oh, it's yeah. a mindset you know you come here everything is mindset yeah. everything is mindset if you decide the mindset to be like this is a process and whatever hurdles are coming across i'll take this as a process and go through it mm-hmm. you will be through it yeah. so it can be taxing but you cannot let your vision of the completion completing mm-hmm. the course blur out you have to stand out in the class and your grades definitely speak for you so when they hire you definitely they are not going to ask you if you are like a grade student grade in- or something <laughs> like that yeah but when people are checking your grades if you mm-hmm. have consistent a's or if you are like good gpa mm-hmm. it shows that you are dedicated it shows that you can put in the work the work ethics that yeah. they are looking for yeah so it also speaks about like it speaks volumes about your understanding they want you to have like super high grades right yeah yeah it is yeah your work ethics but it's no matter like, even that's the fact no matter how high your grades are you have to be confident and you should know how to talk and where to talk and you should have the knowledge yeah that's why i made the youtube channel cuz <laughs> i don't want to talk and i force myself to talk yeah <laughs> you've grown so much like from the first day yeah i know right i have grown a lot yeah from the fr- no. like started from the bottom and now we heard like that's the story <laughs> with and every- growing yeah Ugh. growing and glowing there's no place to stop just yeah to just remember your why why did you came here in canada what's your goal right because if you forget about that then you'll be like fuck i'm gonna go home <laughs> this one so it's always been asked in my comment section even though i answered them on some of the videos so you better watch it can you pay your monthly expense from your part time job okay so now here's the hack monthly okay monthly expenses definitely but when you come to an international country sometimes people get devoted a lot they so when we arrived there was no covid so there was no covid yeah, so, so people fun. wanted to go a lot of you know every day they wanted to party they wanted to go for clubs you. yeah they wanted to go <laughs> shop grand <laughs> yeah so if you want to have if you want to ball in life if you want to have all the luxuries as well then i would say it's difficult but if you are someone who's mindful of your expenses and not too much of a spendthrift personality mm-hmm. then you can definitely save up for your personal expenses because i did i i could save up for mine but i also went out you know i did. yeah yeah <laughs> let's not Yeah so I did party I did so study I did I spend my jobs. money and I did save up for my next tuition fee as well so it's all up to how you manage your uh, money and you how you don't get carried away with all the you know small yeah. small desires true cuz um like for example I'm working in a restaurant or something um sometimes part time workers are only given less than 15 hours a week So sometimes you won't be able to do other luxury because you have to pay your rent, you have to pay your yeah. um, phone, sorry, yeah. your phone bill and stuff. Then you have other school stuff like to buy. So always learn how to manage your money, like prioritize what are you going to need to pay. And not necessary every time how you map out things they're gonna turn out to be that way. Yeah. For example, if you think my next month's expense is going to be around five hundred or two hundred dollars, it's not necessary. It's only going to be that much. It can exceed any time. 
and uh, just like most of the students here work in Walmart, even I hold an experience of working in Walmart. So like she said, there's, it's not fixed that you get 20 hours weekly. Sometimes your manager just allocates you two shifts hours. a week. Oh my god, yeah. that's fun. just two shifts a week. So basically you earn hardly like around 60 to 50 dollars I think yeah. uh, a day or something. So which is not uh, very fruitful if you want to like pay your own expenses. So you have to be ready for such days as well when you don't get full shifts. Yeah. Because it's not me, there are 100 people like me who apply for jobs. So the companies don't have anything to lose. Mm -hmm. But it's up to you if you can, you know, sustain the rigid. Yeah. So if you have like more than what you need for that that month, make sure you keep something yeah. for your next month because you just don't know what will happen. Like COVID. Exactly. <gasps> oh, and remember um, before COVID, the bus there was a bus strike. Oh, oh my, my God. <laughs> And the school is so far, so far oh away. God. This is a very important topic you brought up. Like, <gasps> I remember the cab expenses. There was a huge bus strike yeah. and we had to attend lectures because there comes a point when attending classes becomes compulsory due to certain presentations or mm. you know, so and so reasons. And people stay in different, different regions, right? So not everybody has a car and when you're an international student, you definitely don't, don't have, have a car, car for the first year <laughs> unless and until you have like a lot of uh, funds saved up. Otherwise, you definitely don't have a car and to afford an Uber every day up and down was very difficult that time because minimum charge is like $10 but that day it charged me around $100 one side and I remember paying $95 one side to the college because I had to attend and I had no reason to sit at home like it was it was completely yeah I think day. there was um, a presentation or in class assignment at that time yeah 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 and it we have like three, cla three classes Exactly. Oh my God. Yeah. So we had to pay all that, and this this was going on for at least a month or so, I think. Yeah. If I'm not wrong, I'm not sure. Yeah. So yeah, but thankfully we have beautiful friends. Yeah. Who saved our. So we had a friend named Megan who really uh, <laughs> dropped really us. <gasps> yeah, even though she stayed pretty much far, she made sure that she drops people home. Yeah. So it's very important you also make good friends in the <laughs> class because they're going to stand by you. <laughs> they're going to stand <laughs> by you when nobody else stands by you because uh, the situations are very tough. You don't have your family here when you come here to study alone. Mm. Like if you're coming here to study alone, I'm talking to that particular segment. Yeah. Who just come alone like a warrior and just you know <laughs> to like settle down Bye. or whatever. So yeah. In, in in such times it's only your friends who can stand up for you. People yeah. who are like physically present near you, you need good connections. It's gonna be like friend. your family. Yeah, and you get very attached to them. <laughs> And yeah. Then, can you pay your tuition fee from your part-time job? How much okay. is your term? The entire for a year will cost you around like if you're doing post-grad certificate, 16. it yeah, it costs you 15 to 16, sometimes even 19k dollars. So you pay term wise. So you can pay one term, which is around seven to eight, definitely by saving up. But the trick is if you move in this country, you need to have a job so that you can save up your GIC amount and then you can use your GIC amount to pay off your fees at one go but if you don't get a job like I did not get a job so for, I couldn't pay for my first term completely but I made sure I save up few amount from my small small part-time jobs mm -hmm. so I could pay half of it but my second course I could pay it off completely really? yeah I did <laughs> oh because you have GIC first GIC and, and uh, during the breaks I worked for 40 hours oh yeah so if you work for 40 hours during the breaks then only you can do it but if you are seeing yourself working just 20 hours weekly then it's not it's, it's a bit difficult to pay your fees all by yourself yeah so technically you can pay the tuition fee by yourself working part time but if you work full time yeah you can yeah but i think once you are you have entered that way of uh, you know working part time for 20 hours mm -hmm. and once you get that money in hand once you understand the saving techniques yeah you get that thing in you that you have to pay the fee by yourself and it's not necessarily you you have to have any financial uh, crunch back home or anything like that it's a feeling which almost a lot of students get like this is a new chapter of their life and they mm. want to pay it by themselves and act more responsible and help their parents out. Yeah. So it's something which is very much possible if you are again mindful about your expenses. 
teacher. It's very much doable. You can pay your tuition fee by just earning yourself. But again, it's up to you. You have to be smart with your money. Mm -hmm. You can't put your emotions over there. You can't put your desires. You have to be very strategic about your spending habits. Following the rules and regulations. Yeah. So if you're drinking four times a day, just drink once a day. <laughs> Technically, you can pay your tuition fee from your part-time job. But if you work at least a month or two with your with a part-time and a full-time, then you can pay your next term. Yes. But by just part time, you can. Yes, you can. And again, if your rent is above seven hundred, eight hundred dollars, you can. Then definitely <laughs> you cannot. You will never. But, be. Yeah, just be mindful. Yeah. If you want to pay at least half or like one point of your. If you if you if you wish to fee. pay your tuition fee by yourself, yeah. then you have to decide it the day one you move here because. You start the planning from day one. Like things don't stop here; it keeps on moving. Yeah, and you have to flow with it, like the sea, you know, go with the flow. Go with it. But you also have to have your own uh, ideas and strategies mm. already ready for it. Yeah, that's why it's really helpful, like to watch yeah. this kind so of videos. So if you get, I think GIC allowances you get around six hundred dollars monthly. Or really, I haven't tried GIC. Mm. So. I had to make sure how much I'm spending and how much I'm saving up. So I decided to save up 200 from every GIC every month at least. So by the end of the year, I had like at least 50 percent of the amount. Wow! I don't have GIC, so yeah. But you yeah, have so your, but you had your sister. Who yeah, she's like my bank. Yeah. <laughs> so GIC is another way to yeah. prove your funds. If so, you're gonna come here in Canada, yeah. So for like for us, it was compulsory. Like me oh. coming from India, it was a compulsion. So, I had to, I had to invest uh, around ten thousand dollars as Canadian my GIC dollars. money. Yeah, at ten thousand Canadian dollars as my GIC money. Yeah, and the government every monthly they transfer you that money in parts. Okay, so for your expenses. So you have to apply in a Canadian bank. Yes, and get that GIC yes. offer, and then it's gonna. Put money in it every now and then, and uh, like, build up to ten, at least ten k, right? And then, if you already have ten k, then you can show that as a proof of fund. Yeah. So even when you don't get a job, you don't have to be scared because mm. you're getting an allowance monthly, which is basically your own money. But still, it sounds like a savior at that moment yeah. because you you don't know where to go, but you have GIC money, so you're like yeah. safe. Safe. Yeah. So Scotia is something. It's it's a good bank. Uh, CIBC, mm. ICICI. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned a lot in this yeah. conversation. In Having like hardcore goals is important, but please don't forget to trip on the beautiful nature uh, Canada has for you. And enjoy. Yeah. Still enjoy everything. Yeah. yeah. Even if you're stressed, it's so beautiful that your day, your day is going to be peaceful. So it's all about it. It's all about having a positive mindset. All about aligning your goals and having a proper management of your monetary resources, your money, everything, and you're there. And following all the work permit rules and study permit rules. Yes. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned a lot from Akshara and our experience. As yeah. Hope I've helped you all and stay yes. safe. Our experience as full-time international student here in Canada while working for. Time. See you on my next vlog. Goodbye. Subscribe. Subscribe.